Okay, let's see who's coming in here. <laughs> what a pain. <laughs> so, um, for those of you who are watching this, uh, the recorded version of this, we've had a technical problem. Um, but everybody's coming back on the Hangout here, and we'll start back up in just a second. Uh, we're Barrow is talking about uh, the toolchain, Lenaro Android toolchain, and building Lenaro Android builds with it. And he was just about to talk about Galaxy Nexus. So we'll give him just a second to do that, or to come back online. It's interesting with these hangouts. Uh, both uh, Kiko and I were were uh, logged in through our on-air account. If you look at my name, you can see that. <laughs> and uh, Kiko's, uh, I think, when Kiko left, then it thought, "Oh, the host is gone. Let's." Let's shut off the broadcast. <laughs> oh, there's Tixie. All right. Um, I'm not sure where uh, Barrow is. If he comes back online, uh, we'll go from there. Um, so since uh, we'll, we'll rearrange things a little bit. Um, Tixie. Tixie. Would you mind uh, giving oh. us uh, giving us uh, going through running Lenar Android on Versatile Express and some of the work that you've done? Yep, yeah, sure. Um, I, I guess perhaps I ought to briefly just and just introduce yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, world. I'm 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 Tixie. My real name's John Methurst, but I usually go by the go by the handle Tixie. Um, yes, I. Uh, Yes, for getting Versatile Express working on Android, um, that's one of my first jobs when I joined uh, Denaro. Uh, perhaps I should have just actually just mentioned, just briefly describe Versatile Express because um, it's a bit different from the other sort of low-cost development boards people are used to working with. Um, it actually consists of a motherboard, um, which you can plug in CPU modules. Um, so these are referred to as core tiles. So you can have um, so for one set of hardware you can have say an A9 pr uh, processor or an A15 processor depending on what you plug in um, the motherboard itself has all the peripherals like serial ports, USB, Ethernet um, so what this means is that well I'll say perhaps yeah <laughs> So I, I, I think one of the one of the one of the goals I had right from the beginning of the Versatile Express was to um, because there's so many combinations. You've got one hardware that, set set of hardware that can change with different core tiles. We didn't want to have to produce lots of different Android builds. Um, so ah, I'm just showing a picture <laughs> for those people at home. <laughs> this is from our site, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Tixie, go ahead. Yes, yeah, so so the so the boards are actually quite um um quite big, they're about yeah a foot, a foot square, something like that, thirty centimeters. Um, so the motherboard itself actually has a an ARM CPU on it, which runs a bootloader, and this has a separate onboard SD card for containing the firmware and config files, um, and you can talk to this card by USB mass storage device. Uh, is from your PC, um, so that's how we actually get our versions of UFI or U-boot onto the board. Um, this is a manual process because the bootloader can't read our Android image from the external MMC slot. Um, now we've, with Lenaro's, um, with all the work on device tree that's been going on in um, in Lenaro for the past year or two, it means that we can actually have a single kernel binary. Um, which will run on all the different plug-in core tiles. So we've got kernel binary which will work with, on an A9 CPU, on an A15 CPU, uh, and now with Big Little, um, you know, a, a core tile that's got both A15 and A7 on it. Um, 
So Tixie, I'm going to just stop you uh, real quick and just explain. Uh, so Device Tree is something that Lenaro has worked on over the last um, over the last year, and it's was one of our bigger one of our bigger efforts. Device Tree is a mechanism that you can pass a file to the Linux kernel, and the Linux kernel can read that file and set up. Um, addresses and other configuration appropriate for the board that it's running on and what this allows you to do is not use different kernels for uh, different SOCs you can run the same kernel with um, just different of these device files and um, you can select the particular device file depending on which platform you're on so Tixie's work with the Versatile Express is extremely useful in demonstrating how how nice uh, the device tree work that Lenaro did um, is. So after you, Tixie. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Thanks for that. Um, so yes. So because we. Um, because we've got a single kernel binary and all the user sides are going to be the same, it would mean that the only difference in that in Android images between the different sets of hardware would be the bootloader and the device trees. Um, so to, to avoid the proliferation of versions of builds and images, um, I decided to aim for trying to produce one image that will work on all of them. Um, because because actually um, putting the bootloader onto the device is a manual process, then this doesn't really matter too much. Um, other boards where you have to co copy a specific U-boot into a boot partition for the board to read. Um, but because that's um, that's a manual process on Versatile Express, then I, I, I went for the aim of producing an image where I put all of the device trees and bootloaders into the boot partition at once. Um, so that was one of the first things that to do. Um, um, so I actually had to extend the Denaro's um, make files and build systems to, first of all, I had to add support for device trees because that was already wasn't in there. Um, in the agenda, I've posted links to actually all my patches. Um, so they're, they're hyperlinked up so you can actually see what I actually did. And my commit messages actually say how you use these features. Uh, so yes, so I added support for device trees. And then also supports for building multiple versions of U-Boot. Um, and finally, also because I'm very interested in UFI as a bootloader instead of U-Boot, um, I also had to add support to building UFI. Um, so the end result is that when you build a Versatile Express image now, we actually produce four device trees, four sets of hardware, and sets of U boot and ver and UFI to go along with those. So you end up with one image with all those in the boot partition. Uh, and then, so if, when you download that image, then you just pick the, the bootloader you want and you can flash that onto your device and, and away you go. Which is very good because it means we only end up with one image to build and distribute. Yeah, and Tixie, I mean, the work that Tixie's done really demonstrates the single kernel, um, single platform, uh, uh, Shangri-La, for lack of a better term, that we're all shooting for in the ARM community. Um, the Versatile Express board's uh, platform really turns out to be a great, um, a great platform for doing that work because, uh, you know, if you didn't have it, you would have this this large prolifer pro proliferation of builds. So, thanks, Tixie. I appreciate the appreciate the overview. Okay. Yep. No problem. So, um, we're kind of uh, since we kind of uh, stopped the stopped the broadcast and started to back up again, and and a couple people needed to still join. Um, I'd actually like to jump over to uh, Nicholas, who almost got me arrested in Shenzhen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry about that. It's because uh, they don't know so much about uh, Linaho yet. Because <laughs> uh, I'm sure that in a couple of weeks you can just pass the border without passport check. <laughs> I It'll hope be so. so famous. <laughs> and Barrow too. Barrow got in without problem. He's already Barrow. famous. That's right. 
So Nicholas um, actually runs armdevices.net and is a blogger and a, and a general busybody that uh, I met at our last uh, Lenaro Connect in Hong Kong, and he came up and started asking me to do do uh, do interviews, and uh, we did a couple of those and and got to know got to know what the work that he's done and. Um, Turns out that Nicholas has pretty much his, his his finger on the pulse of the ARM community. So Nicholas, tell us how the ARM community, how the how the the long uh, the long tail of ARM um, vendors are are looking at Lenaro and have used Lenaro and you know other issues they're running into. So uh, when you go to Shenzhen, there's all these uh, cheap ARM processors, like fifty dollar uh, Android tablets with the all winner processor and a rock chip and via and uh, and am logic and all these guys uh, when I try to do interviews with them and I mentioned in now I know that they are thinking about it or they are watching what you do I guess but I guess you know better exactly what level they are in trying to join and stuff like that but uh, I mean yeah, they're, they're they, they're interested, do they're interested in in Arrow? Yeah, totally. Like, uh, well, at the Linaro Connect in Hong Kong, there was uh, all winner was there, like with uh, five or, or maybe secret. I shouldn't say it. I don't know, but there was like uh, ten engineers there from from uh, all winner, which is the one of the most popular right now in the cheap Android tablets and all that. And uh, Rockchip is totally looking into it. Um, they they asking me to send them them links to. Uh, not just the videos because they cannot watch YouTube in China, so they need to use a VPN to watch YouTube, but uh, to to get some information of, from what you're doing. And so I wonder, maybe uh, is it just going to be like a piece of cake for them to join? I mean, I don't know. Maybe not. Yeah. So I mean, I think uh, you know, you know, because our 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 code is out there and, and it's pre-integrated, right? We don't just have a wiki and a bunch of gits and make people kind of figure it out from there. We actually spend the time to pull the pro the platforms together. I think that platform integrators um, in Shenzhen and, and otherwise that are working on these lower cost boards have a have a really good opportunity to uh, to take something that's almost pre-made and, and really make their devices uh, run. So you could have a quote unquote cheap Android tablet running a a newer version of the kernel and a newer version of the tool chain, and that would be pretty awesome. I mean, the goal is that even the cheapest uh, Android device should be able to update itself forever, like to get the new versions, get the fastest possible performance. That's that's what you're doing, right? That's right. That's right. Well, thanks, Nicholas. I appreciate the I appreciate the uh, the the info and and uh, you know if anybody's interested uh, and uh, please take a look at armdevices.net, uh, Nicholas's blog site. Uh, this guy has some great information about everything that's happening in the arm world. So, uh, just yesterday, I got the Odroid X. Uh, have you got that already? And you know the the quad core Exynos, uh, like oh. a board. You know, we're we're starting to you know we're actually we're actually starting to, to plan uh, bringing it into our into our uh, into our our CI loop. So that's a that's a very topical topic. <laughs> I think uh, it's hundred twenty nine. Yeah, I, I think there there is two uh, there are two two vendors in in Korea. Uh, one one is the the, the old drive, and another is some uh, some in, in signal. Yeah, I guess there right. are two vendors. Yeah. Cool. Cool. All right. Thanks. Well, thanks. I got Nicholas. to go uh, to the volleyball training. See you. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> See you. Okay. okay. So um, now that we're kind of back on track here, um, we'll s keep going with uh, Barrow talking a little bit about Galaxy Nexus, then Patrick about putting together Lenaro's first build, and Matthew will uh, finish us out with with Snowball. So, Barrow, can you pick back up on our Nexus, Galaxy Nexus talk? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Galaxy Nexus was in a couple of ways different from the other builds we do. Because usually the, our build system produces tables containing the system the partition, the boot partition, the data partitions, uh, and 
on the Nexus, we ne uh, needed to do the. Uh, basically, we needed to get rid of all the changes we made to the build system before, because then we need an image that we can flash on using fast boot as no uh, normal Android does, because that's what's on the device. So we had to conditionalize all the code that was uh, made to uh, generate our normal builds. Other than that, it started working really quickly. We had a booting version within a day. And now uh, we are bringing back all the optimizations. One more topic that is not completely solved is uh, how to handle all the binary blocks. Uh, we have a script now that um, takes our build that is done without any of the blobs and then uh, takes the Google from there and copies uh, the, all the blobs that it needs from there. But it's a bit of a hack and it would be really nice to have some more things like having the Google apps out of the box instead of having to flash them through uh, recovery. But probably at some point that's going to happen and in time we have a working build for, uh, where we can test stuff. Yeah, the, it's really exciting. This is this Nexus build will be the Go Galaxy Nexus with Lenaro stuff. So every you know, kind of like um, uh, Cyanogen mod, you know, you'll be able to take a, a typical typical Galaxy Nexus and actually use Lenaro's improvements and work in the upstream on a production device. So that'll be really cool. Thanks, Beryl. Yeah, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! Look at that awesomeness. Look at that, you're almost out of battery. <laughs> All right. <laughs> As always. <laughs> As always. All right. I think there's two things to need to do for the next um, Nexus device. The first is the battery. The second is obviously to use Lenaro from uh, from scratch. That's right. That's right. That's what we're hoping for. All right. So, Patrick, tell us, tell us about putting together Lenaro's first builds. Okay. Oh, and so, introduce yourself as well. <laughs> yeah. Sure. My name is uh, Patrick Reed. Uh, I was the first one to join uh, in our Android team. Well, actually, from the beginning, we didn't have an Android team, so I was it. Uh, and I was involved in everything that was needed to get Linar to start working with Android. Uh, so, yeah, things like setting up gits and uh, discussing licenses and uh, contribution agreements that we, how we should handle that internally in Linar and um uh, then it was me for a while for a month or two then Jim and Jeremy from Oaks lab uh, joined and uh, we set up the first panda build we had um, it's it, we only have provided the gits and the manifest and you have to download it and build it yourself so we didn't have uh, the build server as we have today and uh, we didn't have uh, Garrett either so uh, my job was to uh, read uh, everything on the mailing list and uh, find all the patches that we want want to have in the build see how the code review went and finally put them on, on the gits push the patches so uh, one of the first things we did was uh, that we included the kernel in the build because normally when you build uh, Android from the Android Open Source project. They uh, have a pre-built kernel. So we added a kernel in the build and then we and, uh, added U-Boot uh, because we use U-Boot for all of our boards. And uh, the next change we did, or one of the first things we did was that uh, ASAC, Alexander Sack, he said that he wanted us to use the Linar Media Crate the tool we have for creating uh, SD cards. And he wants to use that for uh, Android builds as well. So we started building uh, tarballs instead of images. So I think that's the main differences 
we have in the Lenar builds compared to Android open source product that we include kernel and U-boot and that we build tarballs and of course uh, that was what, the, what we did in the beginning and then uh, throughout the project so far we have added a lot of stuff um, probably the most famous things are in various patches for uh, using the, tool, the toolchain uh, what else did we do? We added um, OX Bench as a way of testing that things actually worked once we have built things. And uh, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, pretty, pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. I mean, you know, we the Lenar Android Media Create is not, um, you know, it it's kind of where where we really diverged from AOSP in terms of process and and we now we're actually branching out into fast boot ways of, of dealing with things but it's nice because it does one, one really cool thing about using the upstream U-boot um, in a lot of our products is that we can actually support things like the 44 the Panda 4430 and the Panda 4460 out of the exact same build and um, even AOSP couldn't boot off of the 4460. So that allowed the 4460 um, to be used useful. So thanks, Patrick. Yeah, um, sure. Let's uh, finish up here with Matthew. So Matthew, I, uh, I, uh, Matthew is, <laughs> is, uh, always tells me I can't, I shouldn't say his name like that because I don't sound French or French-Canadian. <laughs> But Matthew is going to talk to a, is going to finish us off with talking about how he got uh, Snowball going, which is our first non-Panda build. Well, getting Snowball going. Um, so basically, uh, just like you get any board going on 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 the Linero distribution, um, but basically you you start with with the most simple thing. Uh, start with an existing board. We have many to choose from, and uh, obviously you attack lunch to start with because this is the main entry point to the build system. So start with a board. If you take a panda board or a snowball, it doesn't matter. Uh, just make sure that your lunch, you, you do lunch with that board to start with, and then you start replacing instances with. Uh, um, uh, basically of, of your own board. From there, once you have lunch configured, uh, go with the kernel and your own U-boot. And make sure that obviously things build. At the beginning, it will be difficult, but as you proceed, uh, it shouldn't be the end of the world because uh, the Linero Android build is, is fairly well done um, and, and mature enough to, to, um, to, uh, to welcome new platforms. So, so, as I said, it's, it's definitely not um, the end of the world to get to the system to boot. Um, from there, uh, since ICS, it's extremely difficult, if not impossible, to run your, your um, Android without graphic acceleration, which is where like the thick of the problem comes in. For that, you need to have access to the graphic libraries that uh, uh, the chip on, well, that will actually support the chip that's on your board, whether it's an imagination chip or a volley chip. Um, in that regard, the vendor will have user space access uh, to give you that needs to be folded into the build. Now, most of the time, um, and it's actually the case for all our, 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 our vendor, uh, um, this, 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 these, gra these graphic libraries need to be changed or modified or optimized. Uh, and Linero understands that, which is why we provide the capability to introduce binary blobs into our builds. So if, you, uh, if, if a vendor chooses to produce uh, graphic libraries and multimedia libraries, what we do is basically plug them into our build uh, via the build script. And, uh, 
it's a solution that's very mature on all our boards. Um, whenever you do make modifications uh, to make your board going, very important to do branches. Like, spin off a new branch. It's so much easier for you afterwards if you need to revert or if, if you need to merge stuff from AOSP. You'll save yourself tons of hassles. Um, and you'll actually know it's much easier to keep track of, of what you're doing uh, and what modifications you've done. So uh, as a whole, like this, 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 these are the grand lines that needs to happen uh, in order to support your, um, like a, 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 in order to introduce a board into the Android build. Uh, Snowball was no exception. This is exactly uh, how it happened. So yeah, back to Zach. All right. Thanks, Matthew. Appreciate it. Always like to hear tales from the tales from the, the, the front lines. <laughs> All right. Well, um, we've, uh, we've had a pretty big session today. Lots of people chatting. Uh, Vishal talked to us about uh, why we would pick Lenar Android as a baseline. Um, Amit told us about how we can use a custom kernel and project uh, adding projects to AOSP. Um, there's a couple of open discussion points, which I think uh, probably best handle over email um, at this point. Since people have hung out quite a long time. Uh, Nicholas told us about you know the long arm of, of ARM device manufacturers, especially in uh, Shenzhen. Uh, Barrow gave us an overview of why it's so important to have uh, support when in, when trying to integrate. Uh, binary blobs and told us about Lenaro's toolchain and Galaxy Nexus. Then the uh, the conference kind of blew up and we came back and uh, <laughs> Tixie talked to us about Versatile Express and how we were able to or Tixie was able to use Device Tree to support multiple Versatile Express core tiles out of the same uh, with the same platform. And then um, Bear told us again about, or told us about Galaxy Nexus. Patrick told us about putting together the first build, and Matthew finished us up. So, um, do we have any parting questions before we, before we all go to the uh, go to the four corners of the universe? <laughs> all right. Well, hey. I really appreciate everybody coming. I really appreciate everybody taking the time. Please, please, um, if you have questions with the builds, please post them um, on IRC or Lenaro um, Android or any of the other uh, any of the other um, uh, mechanisms mechanisms we have that you can actually get support. So, appreciate everybody's involvement, and uh, we'll we'll talk to you all. We talk to you. <laughs> bye bye. Bye.